conservative new media viewers and Jeremy Lin fans around the world. What's going on? It's me, PFA, Paul F. Villarreal, the NBA expert. We're here to talk about a few things regarding Jeremy Lin and updating how things are progressing for him in training camp. Uh, what I want to cover today, in short, are his changing of his shooting form, something he had to say about Dwight Howard, how Jeremy has won a Houston Chronicle poll, uh, thoughts about Russell Westbrook's injury a little bit more, and finally, I want to talk about Jeremy Lin and some information about him on the site Quora, including information from Jeremy himself. So that's a summary of what I'm going to talk about in this video. Uh, I'm going to go in that order. So if there's anything in particular you want to hear, you can just try to fast forward the video to that part. Okay, the first thing, Jeremy changing his shooting form. Now, you will see in the video description below the video player, I have put three different articles about this subject in that section. The first one is from JeremyLynn.net, which is talking with Jeremy's shooting coach, uh, Doc Shepler. The second one is a portion of an interview that Jeremy did with Rockets.com writer Jason Friedman. And the third part is an article that just came out like two hours ago as I'm making this video on Houston Chronicle, in the Houston Chronicle, talking about Jeremy's changing three-point shot. Here's the summary from what I can gather in reading those three things. Jeremy is working to make his shot more efficient. What he's doing is Doc Shepler, the shooting coach, said to JeremyLynn.net, many players will often, they'll work to have a very explosive jump on their shot, and then at the height of their jump, they will release the ball. And that is a very common technique. Uh, I know that I learned to shoot that way. And it's not a bad way to shoot. The problem is, once you get tired, once your legs get tired, then your shot will be off. It will be off the mark. And so we've talked about, and Jeremy has talked about, how last year he had fatigue issues. So it's better if you can have a shot and a shooting form that does not rely on having a very explosive jump off the ground. The best three-point shooters, the best shooters in the NBA are ones that don't jump very much on their shot. And it's because of the reason I just said, fatigue. Usually, this is players that are larger, taller, bigger. The reason why that is, is when you're taller, you have better leverage. You have more power in your shot, naturally. So you don't have to jump as much. Usually, the shorter players have to jump a whole bunch to try to make up for the difference in power and get the ball to the rim. Well, if you're a shorter player or relatively shorter, like a point guard, as Jeremy is, changing your motion to a more efficient one, jumping a little less high, relying less on the, the, the power from the jump, that can really, really help. Where you will see this at, where you will see what I'm talking about show up consistently, is if you watch the three-point shooting contest at the NBA All-Star Game. What almost always happens is the guys that rely on a powerful jump for their shot, they don't win because they get tired by the end of the competition, and so they don't make it. The guys that don't have to jump much, guys like Larry Bird, uh, Dale Ellis, eh, Dale Ellis, that's old school, but Actually, he jumped quite a bit. People that don't have to jump much to get their shot off, 
they're the ones that do the best because of the fatigue issue. You'll get tired even within the contest. And that's why it's not a good strategy to have that form over a season or in a game, especially when you're playing 40 minutes and you're playing hard. So this is a very good idea by Jeremy and Doc Shepler. And so I'm very glad that they're doing it. What The most important thing for a shot, for shooting form, and I've told you guys this before, is to have a shot that is repeatable, meaning you can shoot the same way over and over and over again. Again, if you're relying on a high jump, you can't do that because you'll get tired. But if you're relying on a low jump, you can keep doing that. You can do that all, you know, all night long, all game long, all three-point shooting contest long. And that's a more sound strategy. And so that's what Jeremy and Doc Shepler were working on, obviously, in, uh, this summer. And that's great. Look, we know how much work Jeremy put in this summer. One of the things that Doc says to JeremyLynn.net, and great job by JeremyLynn.net talking with Doc Shepler again. And uh, uh, I want to say that one of the commenters also told me that Doc Shepler is going to be talking soon with, I believe, uh, Coach Nick from B-Ball Breakdown. So that's something to look forward to as well. Uh, I don't know exactly when that's going to happen, but it sounds like Coach Nick made a uh, a video with Doc Shepler, and that was the commenter Brent Yen that told me about that. Thanks, Brent. Appreciate that. Look, I don't. I see most of the stuff with Jeremy, but I miss things, and so it's it's great if you guys bring things up to me. Uh, I just. Uh, sent an email to Hanny Chang maybe like two hours ago and I basically told her, oh, look, I don't know when I'm going to make a video because I wasn't sure what there was to talk about, but there's always stuff. There's always information out there. So Hanny, obviously I'm making a video now just because I, I saw there was a bunch of information and it was time to make another video. But Hanny helped me find information from Quora and from some other sites. Brent and Yen helped me. People help me all the time. Joyce Ward, Julianne, a whole bunch of people. And I appreciate that because, as I told you guys in the last video, there's going to be more coverage of Jeremy now because people realize how popular he is and because the, the Rockets are going to be good. So they're going to get more coverage. So if you guys point stuff out to me, that helps me, particularly right now because Again, I'm still working on moving and stuff. I don't have as much time to look at everything. So um, I appreciate when you when you point stuff out to me. I know uh, Hanny pointed out, again, Quora, Red94. There's tons and tons of stuff. And as I said, it's good. Jeremy is getting more coverage now, more fair coverage, more positive coverage, and the more the merrier. Great. That's good. Uh, we're, we're really happy about that, but there's, so there's going to be tons of information out there about him. So keep your eyes out, uh, open for that. And as I said, let me know, uh, if I miss something, please point it out. And, uh, you know, I, I can't use every single thing in every video, uh, just because it'd be like four hour videos, especially with the way that I talk, but I, I like to try to read everything because that helps me be as researched up on the topic of Jeremy as I can be. And that's part of what we really try to do here. Um, so, again, I appreciate that. What Doc was saying to JeremyLynn.net, he believes that Jeremy can shoot, I believe, 40% or above in three-pointers uh, this season, I think he was saying, or just in general. I, I agree with that. I think Jeremy shot 40% or above the last three or four months of 2012-2013 of once his knee came around. So, sure, that's possible. And if he gets the, the shooting form better and more efficient, then it's going to be even easier. And the one of the things that you guys know or you've seen and is pointed out by Doc 
Jeremy's form was inconsistent, meaning it's it's not repeatable. It wasn't the same shot over and over again. You, you you'll never be a good shooter if that's the case. And so hopefully with this new form, he'll be able to be better at that. He'll be able to shoot the same way over and over again. That's the only way to be a good shooter. Uh, reliably be a good shooter. That's why last year we would see Jeremy would hit some threes and then one would like go, you know, off the side of the backboard because it, it was, you know, maybe his legs are tired. The form changes because he's relying on the powerful jump that's not there. And then bang, it's, you know, it looks like he doesn't know how to shoot. And that's, that's a common thing. It's not that Jeremy can't play as we know that plenty of doubters would point out when they saw it. Oh, he airballed this. That's because of his legs being tired and the way that he was shooting. But that should start to change now, and that is excellent. Something that Doc pointed out that I think is extremely important is that Jeremy understands now that to be a good shooter, you've got to shoot every single day, day in, day out. Now, again, I'm not saying, you know, oh, Jeremy doesn't understand that. You know, great shooters. Ray Allen, greatest three-point shooter in the history of the NBA in terms of made three-point attempts, I believe, every single day. Ray's basically obsessive, almost like OCD in the way that he works out. But you can see the result. It works. And that's how you get so good. And I think Jeremy is starting to understand how hard he has to work to get to the level that he wants to get to. That seems simple. It seems like, well, yeah, that's easy to know. No, it's not easy to know. When Michael Jordan came into the league, 1984, 1985, I, I think this is when it ha- this happened, this story. His coach at the time was Kevin uh, Lockery, I, I believe it was. Well, apparently, they were going to play the Celtics in Boston that that evening or whatever. So what the coach did, or one of the coaches on the team did, was they took Michael to the Boston arena like three or four hours before the game. What they did, what the coach did was... He, at the top, like at the top of the arena or in the middle of the arena, Larry Bird was doing laps to, to get his conditioning good. And the coach wanted to show Michael that's how hard you have to work if you want to be the best. You got to be here before the game, sometimes after the game. Work, 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 work. And so it's like, some guys don't understand what it means to be a professional and to, to truly put in the work. And that's what separates great players from good players. You have to have a certain amount of talent, of course, but there are many players that have the talent that don't put in the work. And if you want to be at the top, you really got to work much harder. You have to outwork everybody. And I think... Jeremy's starting to understand that now. Now, again, as I've told you guys in videos before, Jeremy knows how to work. I mean, again, you know, I've, I've given the, 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 my talking points before about getting into Harvard and getting through Harvard. You, you have to be able to work. But as we said last summer, he couldn't work because he was hurt and he was rehabbing. You can't work out if you're rehabbing all the time because all you do with rehab is work on whatever's hurt. You do a million knee exercises. You can't do anything else because the knee's not strong enough to let you do anything else. But once you're healthy, as Jeremy is now, and once you're not moving to a new city or just becoming a famous endorser in Asia and have to do, um, you know, weeks and weeks of promotional tours, then you can work. And that's what Jeremy's doing now. And he's, it, it's all coming together now. He has the time to do it. He has the health to do it. And now he understands 
this is what's going to get me where I need to get to. And he knows he has good people like Doc, like his personal trainer, like his team, like the Rocket Strength coaches to show him how to do it. And he's doing it. And it's starting to pay off. This is why this is why I'm so excited about him. And why I've told you guys, you're going to see a different player this year. And in a couple years, you'll see a completely different player if he keeps working like this and he stays healthy. I have no doubt he'll keep working like this. None. He wants this. He's very, very motivated to get to the top for a whole bunch of reasons. He just needs to stay healthy. And this is going to get, and let's hope he can. This, all of this will get easier and easier for him. All of it. The skills work, the conditioning, the r- routine, the regimen he has to do, it'll get more and more like habit to him. And he's getting towards that, and that's good. That's what's so great about the Harvard background. He knows how to work hard. But look, anybody that gets the NBA knows how to work hard. So I don't want to, you know, I don't want to put anybody else down that didn't go to Harvard. Uh, but he's used to that. He's used to that grinding, grueling work. So great. Uh, it should be fun to watch the results of this. It sounds like everybody's noticing how he's changed his form. We heard what Akeem said about, you know, joking with Jeremy. Hey, I thought you couldn't shoot. <laughs> you know, obviously he's shooting pretty well. And I think we're going to start seeing the returns this season as we did the last couple months of last season. Okay, the second thing is Dwight Howard. I told you. Now, this comes from an article, again, from Jason Friedman, doing good work. Again, you can check out Jason. I know he's got... Uh, a YouTube channel. I think it's Rockets Cast. He has, I think, I the name of the channel is, uh, just look for Jason Friedman, F-R-I-E-D-M-A-N on YouTube, and you'll find the channel. I can't remember the actual name of the channel. Um, it's a little bit uh, of a different name, or it was. Uh, I'm not sure. Um. And that's, again, this, this information is in the video description below the video player where uh, he's talking about uh, Dwight Howard and passing. Basically, what Jeremy said is that Dwight is just beginning to learn to look for passes that he wasn't looking for before. What that says to me is that Dwight's starting to get used to how excellent of a passer Jeremy is. Now, I'm not, obviously, Steve Nash can pass the ball. Kobe can pass the ball. Dwight's played with good passers before. The difference is, now, Jeremy doesn't say he's talking about himself, but that's who he's talking about. He's just trying to be humble. And and probably James Harden as well, but this is more about Jeremy, in my opinion. The thing that Jeremy can do, and and we've talked about this before, Jeremy can get you the ball from anywhere on the court. He can pass it to you from half court. He can pass it to you from full court. He'll make passes and get you alley-oops that almost nobody else can make. I'm not saying there isn't anybody. I mean, LeBron can make great passes. Chris Paul is a tremendous alley-oop passer. There are very few people in the NBA who can make the passes consistently that Jeremy can in terms of alley-oops from all over the court. He's incredible at that. People say, uh, you know, I told you guys I was responding the other day to, to a Clutch fans thing about Jeremy. And the guy wrote that he was a good passer. No, no, no. He's a great passer. And particularly because of that ability to make the full court, half court, out of nowhere passes. All you have to do to know this is you had to have watched him in New York. Uh, he did some of it last year, but New York was a, a, just a, a, it's incredible what he did and the way that he did it. I mean, he's giving guys lobs from 40 feet out. 
and they're perfect. <laughs> I mean, just just incredible. So Dwight is just getting used to that. Look, Steve Nash is a phenomenal passer, tremendous elite all-time passer, but he doesn't make the type of passes that Jeremy does in terms of over-the-top, full-court, half-court, all game in and game out. And so Dwight has to get used to this. But it's if you're Dwight, you're pumped. I mean, almost anywhere you are on the court, Jeremy can lob to you. And Dwight's one of the best lob dunkers in the, in the league, although he is coming off of the back surgery. And we heard from Dwight the other day saying, yeah, I'm just starting to get my bounce back. So, in other words, he might not have the explosiveness that he used to have. So, he might not be quite the, the dunker that he used to be, but he's still a great dunker. So, if you have somebody like Jeremy, I mean, you, know, you have to look up for the pass constantly. And it's an easy way to get baskets. I mean, for Dwight, that means easy, easy baskets. Um. Speaking of that, and I was not going to talk about this, but that reminds me of something. As you guys know, the other day I was telling you about the whole theory that I had about why Dwight, uh, why Jeremy went to Aspen and the whole thing about the Adrian Wojnarowski article and people were bad-mouthing James Harden supposedly. Well, I want to credit commenter Arsenium12 because he went and looked the stuff up. And he found the article. And I'm going to look at it right here. This is from Arsenium. And this is a quote from the Adrian Wojnarowski article itself. Quote, in presentations and private conversations to Howard, Harden had been sold as a bad teammate and selfish player, multiple sources told Yahoo Sports. Unquote. Bam. That's it. That's exactly what I was talking about the other day. And so thank you, Arsenium12. Like I said, I need your guys' help to find this stuff. I can't look up everything. It all comes together. Uh, William Thomas Hill, it's all coming together. And we actually, I actually have legs to stand on here rather than just my own, uh, you know, imagination. When you put together that information, you put together, and Arsenium also said, and this is, again, accurate, and this is great research by him or her. I'm not sure which uh, gender the person is. Probably a male, but I don't know that. Uh, sorry, Arsenium. I'm, not just, I'm just trying to cover my bases here. I don't know. I don't want to say you're a man and then turns out you're a woman. Um, Arsenium pointed out that when Daryl Morey and Kevin McHale did their press conference on media day, Morey, I believe it was, said, yeah, it was Dwight's idea to organize the Aspen thing. In other words, Dwight's the one that probably told Jeremy, hey, Jeremy, come to Aspen. So you take that, you take that Dwight rounded up the Aspen thing, you take the the, the Adrian Wojnarowski information, which is now solidified by Arsenium's research, and you take the information I just said about the passing ability, it seems really, really strong evidence or possibility. Yeah. Dwight Howard's understanding Jeremy's my guy. I need this guy to help me with Harden, supposedly, based upon... I'm not Again, I'm not putting down James Harden. I'm not validating these remarks that were made, supposedly, to Dwight Howard. I love James Harden. And James Harden's a willing passer, in my opinion. Clearly, he is. You can see that. But in Dwight's mind, if he's told all this stuff and what he went through last year with him, I think, frustrated he wasn't getting shots. In fact, I know he was frustrated he wasn't getting shots with Kobe. Everything fits. It's like playing a game of Clue. Now you got all the clues. Now you know what it is. You know, Mr. Whatever with the candlestick in whatever room. This is getting much clearer now. If you're Dwight Howard now, 
Jeremy's your insurance man in terms of getting the ball. And not only is he an insurance man, he can get you the ball anywhere. So you, all you need to do is get to the rim and get by your man, get in transition. You're getting the dunk, and Jeremy's going to throw you the ball. He's not looking to score. He's throwing. That's what people, and I was thinking about, that's what people didn't understand about Linsanity. Yeah, oh, anybody could have done it. You give him the ball. No, they could not have done it. And people get so focused on the scoring of Linsanity, and they should. Jeremy's a unique blend of player he's such an attacking player that he could score huge and that's what without a consistent jump shot at that time just wait until he can shoot but the main thing to me that made Lynn Sanity so special was the passing was the assist and I, as I said there are not many people in the league that can pass the way Jeremy can pass. Very few. And I'm talking about the whole assortment of passes. Yeah, Jeremy turns the ball over. Sometimes he'll he'll mess up the fundamental pass, which is what Mikhail was saying last year with the you know 28 points, nine turnovers coming or whatever. Okay, but the awesome pass, the highlight pass, the get out of your seat and and scream pass. Jeremy is elite at that in the league. There just are not many people that can do what he can do. Uh, it's very, very few. That's what made Linsanity so special because the whole team was involved. Tyson Chandler's getting dunks. Landry Fields is getting dunks. All these guys are getting dunks. Iman Shumpert, Jared Jeffries, that's what made it so fun. That's why the chemistry was so good. Because it wasn't just about Jeremy. It was about the whole team. And before that happened, it was Carmelo isolation, Amari isolation. Boring. I'm on I'm on a team. I don't get the ball. I'm just watching. Crowd's not into it. And then it's like a magician pulling the curtain. Voila. Pull a rabbit out of the hat. That's what Linsanity was. It wasn't just about Jeremy. It was about everybody. Dwight Howard knows that. That's what Dwight Howard wants. Because it makes him look good. It's fun. Dwight likes to have fun. That is, you can't play any more fun than Linsanity 1.0. For, for the whole team. Not just for Jeremy. For everybody. Because you're getting a 40-foot lob dunk that's going to be on Sports Center on a loop. That's what Dwight wants. <laughs> That's what Dwight wants. And so we have the information now. Thank you, Arsenium 12. We have the information now. I can't prove anything. Might not be able to convince a jury in court. Like it's pretty clear what's happening here. And this is just gigantic for Jeremy. Like I said, Dwight's the elder statesman on the team in terms of, of, of guys with clout. If he wants Jeremy, <laughs> he's going to get Jeremy. And let's turn to Patrick Beverly. Patrick can't pass like Jeremy can pass. And Patrick can't score like Jeremy can score. Patrick's an outstanding defender. And he's a excellent shooter. I mean, he shot better from three than Jeremy last year, and he shot better from three than pretty much anybody thought he was going to shoot. So Patrick's extremely important, and he fits with the team for their style of offense and the personnel. He fits. He can't be a playmaker like Jeremy. He can't attack the rim like Jeremy can and the most important thing for Dwight is the passing. But it's also important because Jeremy can attack. Because what that means is uh, if Jeremy goes to the rim and misses, Dwight Howard can get a follow dunk. You see this with the Chicago Bulls and Derrick Rose all the time. Derrick Rose goes to the rim 100 miles an hour, 
three guys collapse on him. He misses, and then, you know, Joakim Noah is getting a dunk on the follow-up because nobody's around him. Everybody went to guard Jer- uh, to guard Derrick Rose. Now, we've talked about this. If, if Jeremy drives to the basket, the man guarding Dwight isn't going to want to leave Dwight. But then you're, you have a problem, which is what Jeremy said the other day. He was talking about pick and roll possibilities with, with the personnel. Either Jeremy's going straight to the rim or, you know, Dwight is getting a lob dunk because the guy leaves him or the guy leaves at the last minute. Jeremy's missing a layup and Dwight Howard's getting a follow up dunk. This is what I'm sure Dwight Howard is thinking. And let's be clear. Whatever the Dwight thought about Jeremy in the past, that's good. But if Dwight wasn't seeing Jeremy doing well right now, then it'd be a different story. In other words, Dwight must be seeing, oh, yeah, yeah, wow, I can see what Jeremy can do. Oh, yeah. And this is what Akeem said. Akeem said when he was in Aspen, he's like, I could see that they realized, uh, Dwight and Jeremy, how much they can help each other. In other words, Dwight understands and has seen for himself how Jeremy can help him. I mean, this is, honestly, this is better news to me than anything else I've heard probably the entire summer. Because if Dwight watched Jeremy playing, he's playing, period. I mean, the only other thing I could hear better than this is if, if Kevin McHale came out tomorrow and said, okay, I am, you know, I guarantee you that Jeremy Lin's going to play 40 minutes a night for 82 games. That's the only thing better than this. Because if Jeremy, if Dwight wants Jeremy to play, he's playing. That's, I mean, that that's it. <laughs> that's, <laughs> it's just, this is, like I said, and this is gold. This is gold. Okay, let's move on to the Houston Chronicle poll. Uh, now, I have a Houston Chronicle article in the video description, and I also have just kind of a, a basic link for, oh, I think it's Ultimate Rockets, their blog on Houston Chronicle for, for the rocket stuff. On the right-hand side, you will see a poll. Now, there are alternating polls. Pardon me. I think there are two different polls that they've been running recently. So you might have to refresh the page to see the, the poll that I'm talking about. Anyway, basically the poll is, well, who should start at point guard, Jeremy Lin or Patrick Beverly? And as of when I looked at it the last time, it was 85% for Jeremy Lin. So... You know, there's not a ton of people that voted. It's like, I don't know, 35, 3,800 people. That's not a ton of people, but the choice is clear, and that's good. We've heard all this stuff, and doubters, and Beverly's going to start, and all this blah, blah, blah. Well, it doesn't sound like the people want Patrick Beverly to start, and that doesn't matter. The people aren't making the decision, but it's still a good thing that, Apparently, a whole bunch of people want Jeremy to, to start, and that's that's good. Uh, moving on to Russell Westbrook. Um, look, I feel really bad for Russell Westbrook. The injury that he suffered when he hit uh, knees or whatever with Patrick Bailey is a very a fluke injury. He's never had any injury problems, and I told you guys he had the torn meniscus just like Jeremy, and He wasn't sure if he was going to start the season. Well, it just came out that apparently there was a stitch or something loose from his surgery, and now he had to get new surgery, and he's going to miss like the first four to six weeks of the season. Look, I love Russell Westbrook. Uh, I have a lot of respect for him. He's taken a whole bunch of criticism. He is an incredible basketball player, and I truly, truly hope that he is able to come back and be the player that he was before the injury. Uh, This is a little bit scary. Uh, It sounds like, um, you know, again, there was just something a little bit left or something from the other surgery. I bring this up. Again, coming back to Jeremy and the criticism Jeremy took last year with his knee injury. These are not simple injuries. Everybody thinks it's a simple injury. It's not a simple injury. And I said in the last video, I really wish 
people would have been better to Jeremy with his knee injury. And stop pretending like he didn't have an injury. Stop pretending like he started the season at 100%. That's freaking ridiculous. Okay? I mean, it's if I read one more thing talking about Jeremy had a bad year and then nobody talks about the injury and the strengthening, I'm just going to go nuts. And Russell Westbrook's unfortunate situation makes it clearer. I told you guys before, Chris Paul went through. Now, Chris Paul's had different issues with his knees. He had a torn lateral meniscus, same as Westbrook, same as Jeremy, uh, several years ago. It took him like a season and a half to get back to the, to the same level. But nobody talks about that with Jeremy. Ah, Jeremy just sucks. He's no good. I didn't say he was a fluke. No, I mean, it just, it's so unfair. But Jeremy's almost through it. We saw it the last couple months of last season. And hopefully, with good health, improved skills, Dwight Howard's influence, Jeremy's going to get a chance to just shut people up for good. I am so tired of this. The lack of respect given to Jeremy about this injury and rehabilitation. I just, I mean, this is why, this is part of why I make these videos. I told you guys last time, you know, John and I, strength training, I've done a, tr a bunch of strength training. I was recruited to be a power lifter from high level people, but it just wouldn't work. I, I have bone issues. It just That's why I couldn't play basketball for beyond a certain amount of time. It's just the uh, genetic stuff in my family. I've dealt with, and I don't, it's not about me. I'm just, I'll, I'll tell you what this is about. I've dealt with all kinds of surgeries, rehabs. It affects you. It throws you off. And some of the people writing this stuff don't have any idea about training, about basketball, about lifting, about rehab, and how this stuff affects you. And that's what makes me mad. Because they give certain people a pass, like Russell Westbrook, kind of like Dwight Howard last year, although a lot of people were running him down, like he was pretending that he was hurt when he wasn't. Are you nuts? He's not even fully healthy now. That's... But nobody gave Jeremy a pass. No one. And it's people that don't know anything about athletics or training that write stuff like that because they have never gone through it. They don't understand what it's like to play a sport with 60% knee strength when you're used to playing with 100% knee strength. And so now Jeremy just sucks. He's no good. Just... Man, it just it just drives me crazy. As I said, that's part of why I make these videos. Look, I don't know everything about the NBA, and I don't know everything about training, but I know a lot about both. And I certainly know about injuries and recovery from injuries. Jeremy wasn't right to start last season. <laughs> as simple as that. And anybody that pretends that he was doesn't know anything. It just they don't know what they're talking about. As simple as that. And it just, I'm... You know, I'm sure this is part of what drove Jeremy crazy last year. You know, he had all those troubles and the testimony and struggling and crying. Yeah, because nobody's giving him a fair shake. And he doesn't want to say anything about it. Jeremy was saying he was fully healthy in September, which is, I think he was. That's, no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. Because that's why he came back out in October near the start of the season and said, yeah, I'm still, my knee's still not right. Yeah, and then he didn't talk about it anymore, pretty much. He didn't talk about it anymore because Jeremy won't talk about it. A lot of pro athletes, they don't want to say stuff because they don't want the opponent to know that they're hurt, and they don't want to look like they're making excuses. And again, Jeremy was under so much pressure from doubters and stuff that he didn't want to say it because he knew if he said it that there's a whole bunch of people that would have jumped on him. He's oh, he's He's weak. He's mentally weak. You still hear he's mentally weak, which is a joke. He's not mentally weak. He just doesn't want to say anything because you guys keep jumping on him, and you're looking to take him down with columns and words. So he's not going to say anything. 
because that's the way that he is. And I respect that. But, man, wake up, people. You know, I, I don't want to use this phrase and stuff, but you hear this. You know, sometimes you hear athletes talk about writers who never competed. Dude, you pencil neck geek people that never did anything. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about a lot of times. And that's not right. It's not fair. Especially when you're arbitrarily picking out people you're going to be nice to and give them the benefit of the doubt. And you're picking out people you're not going to be nice to. That's what I said. Then again, that's part of why I make these videos. I make these videos because they have to get made. Because nobody else is telling the truth. So now that's changing. Finally, as we talked about, and I don't want to get too upset. But this drives me nuts. Drives me nuts. It's not fair. Thankfully, Jeremy was able to get through it. He made it through. He stayed strong. Went back to basics. Went to his faith. And he looks like he's in a good spot now. But, you know, a lot of people didn't want him, apparently, to get to that point. And you know what? Too bad. Too bad. Okay. Um, the final thing is the stuff from the site Quora. Quora is a, a site. I've never heard of it until the last few days. Um, it's a site where you do like questions and answers. And Jeremy, there's a few questions that Jeremy answered on there. And there's also a couple questions that people who knew Jeremy growing up answered. Again, Hanny Chang pointed this out to me. Thanks, Hanny. Um, I put a link for that in the video description. You can check it out. Some of the stories are great. Jeremy just talks about his own stuff and kind of how he learned to be a bit more humble, I think, in high school uh, with the help of his brother and how that helped his career as a, as a basketball player and how on uh, some of the, the, the one or – there are two people that knew Jeremy when he was younger that, that give answers. And one of them was like, I believe, also a teammate of his at Harvard I, I or went to Harvard. Um, I can't remember which or both. But he knew Jeremy when Jeremy was like in sixth grade. And he was saying, yeah, nobody thought Jeremy was whatever then. But then he's like, I saw him in high school again and he had grown. I was like, oh, OK, yeah. Yeah, Jeremy's for real. Yeah, Jeremy can really be something. And that's what's so great about Jeremy's. He surprises people. Nobody thought he was going to you know, make the NBA. Nobody thought he could do Lynn Sandy. He, he's always better than what people think he is, or almost all the time. You know, and people have talked about how you know, he's either overrated or underrated. Well, you know, usually he's underrated, and he's kind of back in that position of being underrated now. And look, he, he seems to... Um, he seems to do good when he's in that position. So uh, there are a lot of athletes that are like that. A lot of athletes thrive on that. Uh, Dwayne Wade, I know, is like that. I mean, Dwayne Wade, he had a couple of different knee bruises on one of his knees in the playoffs, and everybody's like, well, geez, maybe maybe they should sit Dwayne Wade. And Dwayne Wade himself went to the head coach of Miami, Eric Spolster, and it's like, well, you know, look, if, you know, if you need to sit me so we can win the final, sit me. And Spolster's like, nope, not sitting you. And what did Dwayne Wade do? He blew up in game seven, I think. Dwayne Wade's, uh, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a gamer. He's a prime time performer. He's a guy that's going to show up when you need him and when he's doubted. And Jeremy's got a lot of that in him. So that's that's important. You don't have to be like that. But a lot of athletes that are successful are like that. And uh, Jeremy has demonstrated that he's like that over and over and over again throughout his entire basketball career, at least back to high school. So that's it. Okay, very good. Uh, again, I didn't think I was going to make this video, but we, we definitely need to talk about a couple of things here. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Your comments below. Uh, I heard... I guess Dwight Howard missed uh, practice today with a sore foot. Hopefully that's not a big deal. I think he got it x-rayed. I believe that was a negative. So let's hope it's not anything. Again, the team 
hopefully can have some good health this season. Once again, I am Paul Fidriel, PFE, the NBA expert. Thanks a lot for watching Conservative New Media. We do strive to be the number one Jeremy Lin YouTube fan channel. Everything's looking good. It's looking good for Jeremy. Um, the team's a little banged up right now. A couple different guys with injuries. Omar Ashik, now Dwight, Marcus Camby, Greg Smith. Uh, although Greg Smith, I think, had a, a lower leg issue. I think he'll be back in a couple of days if he's not back already. So that's about it. Hope you guys are having a great day. It is 4.58 p.m. Eastern time here on the East Coast of the United States on Tuesday, October 1st, 2013, which means it is about 4.58 a.m. on Wednesday, October 2nd in Taipei, Taiwan. Talk to you guys soon. I'll try to make it down in the comments. Hope you're having a great night or great day wherever you are. And uh, let's just keep going. Hopefully Jeremy can just have better and better days coming up in training camp. Talk to you soon.